So let's get into it. All right. So marketing in the past has been a lot about how to get a lot of people in the door. And uh, nowadays it has really changed to telling folks um, what you're up to and having them do a lot of the work for you. And that is through social media. And I think we've all experienced that from time to time. Um, I had a really wonderful experience, as I was telling people before, about um, being in Washington, D.C. and um, sharing a, a video live uh, with uh, Facebook Live and having lots of people watch. I think I had something like 350 people end up watching the video and lots of people commenting and sharing it. And so that's a lot of what marketing uh, can be now is you know sharing it with the right people and hopefully they share it further. So we're going to talk more about flipping the funnel in a little bit. Um, engagement is the new word of mouth. You know we're often sharing with people and hopefully that is getting out there. So it used to be that you know uh, you would hear over the fence from somebody what great new tool to use, and now we're hearing that through various kinds of sharing media, um, social media, email marketing, etc. Um, impact of social media has just been huge. Here are a couple of uh, statistics that we may have seen in the past. Um, a lot of people are using social media, obviously, and people are using it. And that last statistic on the right, where 85% of people uh, are using it to show their support of a cause, is very um, apropos today on Giving Tuesday. You know, how many different organizations are sharing um, there are links to donate and how many people are sharing those links with each other and that type of thing. And you may have seen my email today where I talked about an organization that I like called The Bus Project and, um, and so on. So social media is definitely here and it's really a matter of how to use it. How, what do we do with social media? And so I'm just going to continue on. Um, what's really interesting about social media and just about marketing in general these days is how you have an authentic connection with your audience. You have an ability that many major corporations wish they had, which is the ability to interact with your customers one-on-one -on -one, um, or via social media or email marketing and get the word out um, and have relationships that are, um, you know, tight. That, um, that, that large organizations can have. So you have that advantage um, that you can use to your advantage, and we're gonna show you some ways to do that. So you can use social media in a variety of different ways, building and expanding your relationships, increasing brand awareness, and growing your email list. And I would say out of all of these, growing your email list is key. You should always have that in mind as you're using social media because you own your email list, whereas you don't really own any of the followers that you have or fans or people who follow your pins or any of that stuff. Any of those organizations can go away tomorrow. Facebook can close your account. Um, Don sent out an email recently that said, you know, what if Facebook was gone tomorrow? And this is very true. So you have to be really cognizant of this and be growing um, information and data that you own. And that is your email list. So we're going to talk about that in a few minutes about how to grow your email list using social media, but also just other ways that um, the two integrate. So here's our agenda for today. Um, we'll probably go a little longer than I thought we would because of uh, some of the technical difficulties in the beginning. And if you missed that, congratulations to you for coming late because it took me longer than uh, it usually does to get started. And if you have questions, Don will probably be monitoring those and answering them. Um, as he can, and then we'll go into a Q&A session at the end of the um, conversation today, and I'll answer any questions you might have, or you're always welcome to email me at albert at albertideation.com, and I would be glad to um, get back to you with my thoughts. So let's get started. First of all, we're going to be picking social media sites. So the different types of social media sites the main ones that are used for networking, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. There are photo sharing sites for those of you who are individuals, um, but those can also be used for networking. It's interesting. There's a, quite a lot of overlap between the different, uh, different sites. And finally, some video sharing sites. I'm just going to quickly check in and make sure everything is kosher out there in question land. And 
Okay, most people seem to be seem to be everything seems to be going work well. Um, if for some reason you are having difficulty with what I'm showing, um, I recommend just logging back out and logging back in again. That usually helps. Um, Sky, you being in Mexico, I have a feeling there may be other issues going on. So um, I wish you all the best. I hope this is working out and Don can also hopefully help people. Um, but Citrix support is out there as well. So any back, back to social sites. These are most of the main ones that are out there. And there we go. Um, so Facebook, here's a little bit of information about Facebook. You know, none of you are probably novel to the idea of Facebook being useful. Um, unfortunately, what's happened with Facebook's um, algorithm ever since it went public, um, the ability for people to reach out via Facebook to their, um, their members or their fans um, has really diminished. And so I'm going to talk about that a little bit more, but you know, there's a perfect example of why to build your email list um, is that things can change. And what used to be a really great marketing tool for all of us has really changed in recent years to one that's a little less useful. I generally talk about Facebook being a great um, way to connect with your friends and connect with you know, business connections. Um, but your actual Facebook fan page, unless you're going to do some um, some advertising, is basically like just a glorified Yellow Pages ad these days. Um, that said, there's there's reasons to have one. For instance, this Join My List app that you can install. One one more way to build your email list. It also has an advertising platform. Um, here's a little bit of information about Twitter. Um, similarly, there are some challenges with Twitter. Um, you know, just one of the main ones I think is just how quickly your Twitter feed moves along um, day by day. And so information that you share is really only relevant for a very short amount of time on Twitter. It's also got, you know, some great abilities to do customer service. LinkedIn, you're probably all familiar with. It's a great way to connect business to business. Um, or if you're looking for work, it's fantastic way to sleuth who's out there and, and that type of thing. Again, you can do advertising on LinkedIn. And so if your business is a business to business type of organization, this might be a good place for you. Um, Pinterest, great place for visuals. Um, if you, uh, you know, if you have a bakery or if you have a, you know, an organization that does you know, things that are very visually stimulating. Pinterest is a great place to be. It's also a great place to, to build your list. I will just say it. Every one of these um, platforms is a great place to build your list. Instagram, same thing. You know, anything that you post on Instagram, you can include a link for people to sign up for your list. Um, I do have, um, you know, some great experience where I have a client who's got almost 100,000 Instagram followers and he runs his whole business just using Instagram. And so it is possible, you know, to use these platforms for your business. Um, it's kind of a matter of how you do it and what you do with it and, and that type of thing. So lots of creative content and visual inspiration um, via Instagram. So setting up your networks. You want to make sure that you complete your profile. You want to make sure that you have your header photo and profile picture and information about how people can contact you. Because a lot of time what people do is they once they find out about you via one of the social networks is they want to reach out and contact you. Um, it's very infrequent. I think that people are just kind of following an organization for a long time and not actually having something to do with them. So do fill out your profile as fully as possible. Next up, you want to announce your presence. And that's kind of an ongoing thing. You know, we, um, you know, we set up these networks and then it's a matter of telling people about them. So if you're on my email list, you'll see that I often mention uh, my social media sites. And if you come to my website, you'll see links to my social media sites. And if you come to my social media sites, you'll often see links to other social media sites. So, you know, that's an ongoing thing. It's not like, um, you know, new people come on board all the time. It's something that you want to include in your practice um, continually. So, you know, invite 
and announce your presence, you can do that first via your email newsletter. Um, and then you can just continue to do that from time to time when it makes sense to you. Like if you're doing something special on one of your networks, um, that might be a good time to mention it in some of your other places. So here are some of the different ways to mention it. You can mention it in your email. You can share why, you know, being connected with somebody on Pinterest is could be useful to them. And then you also always want to include your social links um, within your email. On your website, you can see on the bottom right of this person's website, they've got um, their social media links. You can also post it on blogs. You can post it on when you comment on somebody else's blog, you can include links to your own social media. So, you know, there's just lots and lots of different ways to include social media. Um, you can connect your networks and have, you know, one posting to another. Um, you know, I've got it set up so that when I post on my Facebook, it immediately posts also to Twitter. Now, some people would say that's not a good practice because each of the social media sites has a different kind of, um, has a different tone and also just the way that it looks. So if you're on Twitter and you're seeing someone post a lot from Facebook, you know, you might not find that um, so uh Feel, not having like an authentic feel to it. That said, if you want to save time and, and you know, one of the social medias is just a place where you're kind of keeping a bookmark of what you do, then it's perfectly fine. So seeking out your existing and target audience, you know, there are various ways to do that. You can always go out onto Twitter and you can look up hashtags or you can look up um, other or Twitter accounts that are in your industry and possibly follow them. Um, you might be doing some, you know, back scratching. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours, where you share some another um, organization's content and they share your content. Um, that sometimes happens. But you want to look around and see what other people are doing and get a sense of um, what's happening out there. Just going to double check in there. Oh, hi, there's about 50 of you out here. Hope it's all going well so far. Let me just double check and see how things are going. Okay, good. I see you're having difficulty, Sky. I would recommend just log back out and log back in. That's the best I can offer you. And while you're here in Portland, let's get together and let me show you what I know about this stuff. So here's, um, here's an example of um, how Constant Contact is using their content. Um, and how they're sharing their email um, newsletter, for instance, within a post. Um, this looks to me like it's possibly on LinkedIn. So there's all sorts of different ways to share different social media um, posts on other social media posts. And here's an example of that. And, um, you know, LinkedIn is a perfect place to be pointing people to other locations like your website. Um, following like-minded organizations helps you, you know, both see what your um, competitors are doing, but it also could be a way to learn um, how they are, you know, how they are using social media and give you tips and tricks on how, you know, how you might do it better. So I definitely recommended following competitors, um, following like-minded organizations, and you know, sleuth out and see how people are, are using. Um, these tools, and it will only help you. Okay, creating content. So here are some ideas about what makes content shareable. You know, when content is useful to people, you want to keep in mind that you mostly want to be doing things on social media, I mean, that are fun, but also that are useful to people, sharing um, tips and tricks or sharing ideas. And so when content is useful to people, they're likely to share it. And um, when content is engaging, same thing, visual. Most people believe that you know, visual um, content is valuable because it stirs you know, different kinds of receptors in the brain than text does. Also, emotional content is really powerful. You, know, you probably notice if you go out and do any searching on what kind of content gets shared. You know, what, if you just Google what are the top 10 shared images on Facebook, you'll probably find most of them are you know, bringing up some kind of an emotional response. So this is a great slide. If you have a 
I'm going to send you the slide since I think the recording is probably not worth sharing with folks. Um, but I will definitely share the slides from today with you. And this is one that I think is a good one to kind of keep tacked up um, by your computer to give you a guide as to what kind of content you want to be sharing out there in the world. Um, you know, and here's how it plays out on mobile. And if you don't have a mobile strategy yet, um, you might want to be really starting to think about mobile. It's come on strong in the last couple of years. I think over 50% of content now is looked at uh, on people's phones or on other mobile devices. So, um, you know, here's how that plays out. Images, you know, links, video are all great content and all great content that will get shared as well. And here's a little bit of how those play out um, on social media. Um, I was on another um, presentation earlier today, and there was a discussion about video. And using the word video in an email subject line helps people to open it. I mean, it helps with open rates. Um, and it's true on um, mobile as well. Video does very well. Um, also, notice that uploading to native Facebook um, video is one of the highest um, uh, F Facebook will reward you for doing that by uh, giving you lots more uh, exposure. So keep that in mind. I, I also read somewhere recently that Facebook um, is believes that within five years, most of the content on Facebook will be video. So if you're not, if you don't have a video strategy yet, you know, talk to me. Um, I'd be glad to point you in some good directions or maybe even work with you. It's an area that I really want to expand in myself in 2017. I think I'm going to make 2017 the year of video. I'm finding it really, um, really helps my own marketing. And it's just, I don't know, it's exciting and it's interesting. So it's something to think about. And another, um, you know, now that I think about that, I also want to mention that um, I, I got a couple of emails right before the webinar started today. And they were asking me, you know, who do I know who can help them with um, email marketing and with creating their newsletters? And I, I am glad to do that. That's what I do for a living. Um, so if you are looking for help with Constant Contact, you can reach out to me. And there's quite a number of other people um, in the region who would be glad to work with you. And we all have reasonable rates and we do great work. Um, Don, who's helping me out today, is is one of those people. And if you are not on his newsletter, um, Don, feel free to share your uh, sign up link for your newsletter um, in the um, chat or the questions area, whichever you prefer. Um, because Don does really fantastic work. I every week I get a couple of newsletters from him, and I I want that because he is a leader in this area, and I learn a lot from him. So great. So here's just a quick um, idea for some content. This is a landscaper and they do really beautiful work as you can see from their efforts in the after picture. And what they also did when they were creating lots of content around this particular um, installation was they were linking to the people who make this furniture and the people who sell these plants. And you know, so they're helping out like-minded businesses um, as they were going. And so, you know, that's an idea is to sort of think about what's the timeline, what's the what's the processes that you're involved in and who are the different uh, organizations that you work with. And if you can help out a fellow um, business, you know, why not do it? And hopefully that will come back around to you as well. Plus, just doing generous things and giving, um, I think, you know, is good for the soul. So consider that as well. Um, so using keywords and hashtags, um, keywords are a great way to um, help your content be searchable, um, and so are hashtags. And just about every social media um, platform out there is involved with both of these these days. So great, Don has shared his link for you all. Great. And um, if you don't get Don's Facebook Fridays, that's also um, something to think about. By the way, he puts out an email that's just about Facebook and it comes out on Fridays. Anyway, so back to keywords and hashtags. Um, you know, hashtags, I think before weren't really being valued on Facebook so much, but I think every social media um, <laughs> um, platform has now sort of bowed to the, uh, <laughs> the strength of hashtags. And so if you're not using keywords and hashtags to do your work, um, it's something to look into. It's a whole sort of subgenre um, that uh, that's worthwhile knowing about. So here is an example of 
you know, if you look up the hashtag for dogs, you can see w who's using the hashtags and how many different posts they are in. And then if you um, look up the word dogs, you can just find other uh, Instagram accounts, for instance, in this example of organizations that are using the word dogs in their account. And then those might be some um, accounts to follow to see what other, you know, what best practices you could be doing. So, and also just organizations that you might want to tag. Um, so different ways to share your online content. You can share it via your website. Um, you can share it on social media. And you can share it via email. And you also don't need to reinvent the wheel. So each time that you're sharing any of this information, you should be able to do it on all different medium um, as one. So for instance, if you have an email newsletter, you can always take that and share it as an archive on your website, and you can share a link to it via social media. And the same thing goes with the other information. You should be able to repurpose your content. Um, and so, you know, more people are seeing you in different places, but the content is the same, thus saving you work. And um, yeah, it's just a good practice to do. So here's an example of repurposing your email content here. You know, a person has used uh, their newsletter and then they're sharing their newsletter on Facebook. And within Constant Contact, it's very easy to do. There's a tool now called Social Share, which allows you to um, set that up. In fact, if you follow any one of my various social media sites, you'll see that I've been promoting um, a Constant Contact um, um, sale that's happening right now. Um, and I do it just with the push of a button. It's really fantastic. Um, you can also share other people's content. It's a great way to both help other people. Um, and you can, you know, do that on um, LinkedIn. Um, it also helps you sort of like with your target audience, um, figuring out um, if you figure out what similar businesses are out there, you can share their content. Um, and it also helps you be more credible and trustworthy um, on the other end when you're sharing um, credible sources. And that's an issue that's come up quite a bit recently in the election, as all of us know. Um, so do do your due diligence to make sure that the information that you're sharing um, is coming from a credible source and is accurate, because that is not always the case. Um, so something to think about in 2017 as we're going forward. And then there's add your own spin, um, you know, taking any kind of um, information from another organization, you're now kind of given the opportunity with all the social media to put in, you know, what you think about it. And that helps people who are following you um, make you more of a trusted expert, or as Michael Katz says, a likable expert. And so that's something to think about is always putting in your uh, comments. When you just share um, content, and you don't actually comment on it, um, to me, that does not lead to more sharing or more engagement. It's sort of just like you're putting a placeholder out there. And I really frown on people who do that, um, just sharing articles and not saying something about them, because I think it shows a lack of lack of interest and a lack of like, you know, why did you share this? What's important about it? What's your takeaway? Why do you think someone should read it? It'll also encourage someone to find out more when you add your own spin to it. So content does matter. Um, there's definitely the 80, 20 uh, or 80, 10, 10 rule. I'm not sure to where exactly this is going, but the idea is that you don't just sell a hundred percent of the time that you always want to be you know, adding in um, interesting information um, into the mix and ever so infrequently, you know, selling to people or showing them what your uh, sale of the day is. And, you know, I watched a webinar recently by a guy from an organization called Sticky Branding, and he was talking a bunch about how um, most people are not out there to buy. They're not ready to buy from you. Um, they might not be ready to buy from you for two to three years. And so you want to just keep people interested and learning about what you do and not just selling to them because you'll lose people. And I certainly have had that experience myself. I've certainly lost a lot of people. Some of you might be unsubscribing from my newsletter today um, because you know of overselling and not providing 
um, valuable, interesting content most of the time. So something to keep in mind, it's kind of a hard one to do because your organization is probably about making a profit. But if you know that you know 95% of the people who are following you or who are subscribed to your newsletter are not there to buy today, then it really can help you change what you're doing. So 80% valuable, 20% promotional. I would even bring that down to less than 20% promotional. Now, if you know, you know, who the 5% of the people are who are ready to buy from you, then that's a different story. Then you might want to, you know, segment them out and be doing something different. Oh my God, doesn't that pizza look good? I just have to say it's definitely time for lunch. All right. Let's see. Everybody happy out there? Okay. Um, Tammy's got a question. I'm going to let Don answer that. And for now, and just move right along. Okay, so saving time with tools. Now, this one is called My Social Suite. Um, there's also Buffer, Hootsuite are both out there. Um, I prefer, personally, I use Buffer.com. And what this does is it allows you to share your um, work on social media in multiple places at one time. So Constant Contact, to me, has the best and cheapest tool if you're using Constant Contact with their social share tool it allows you to share your newsletter as a link out to social media sites. Um, but a tool like My Social Suite is great because you can um, you can do things like you know quickly share to five sites at once. Um, you can change the picture that's on there, and there's just all, and you can also preset it so that you've got 30 posts um, coming for the next month, um, which is you know that's a useful thing to have. Again. You have to be careful about that, you know, in case you send something out in day 20, um, something happens and you're somehow cross-posting um, about something and maybe there's been a some kind of an accident nearby your shop or something and people are looking for information about the accident and not looking for, you know, what your latest sale is. So you have to be really on top of it when you use tools like this. So I'm very careful about that. I pretty much just use Buffer when I'm ready to share something in the moment or maybe, you know, in the next day or two. I don't tend to schedule my posts out that far in advance, but you can. Um, and here is, you know, just some of the monitoring tools, the analytics that my social suite offers. And that's a great thing to know is how many people clicked on your information, how many people saw it. You can also just sort of get a sense of, how many people are out there using what tools. And in this one, for instance, you can see that most people saw this post on Instagram. And so that might be something to consider in the future that more of your people on Instagram are more engaged. And so you might want to lean more heavily into the Instagram area. Um, advertising is out there. And this is um, some statistics about social media advertising. Um, 25% will visit the location or website who see your ad and 14 to 16% will purchase a product or service. Now I would definitely say, um, you know, give social media advertising a try. Um, personally, I tend to put my advertising dollars into email marketing and my time into it um, for a variety of reasons that have been talked about in some of the other webinars today. And I'm happy to expound on that. If you go to my website, albertideation.com, you can see what my thinking is about this. Um, that said, you know, things constantly change and the ability of, you know, some of the micro targeting that's available within social media advertising these days is fantastic. And so there's no doubt that that's just getting better and better. Um, my understanding is that um, Trump, for instance, used Facebook advertising uh, very, very um, precisely to target voters around the country in particular ways, in a way that we've never seen before, um, using things called dark posts, which sounds bad, but it's just, it just means it's not seen by certain people and seen by other people. Um, but so I would um, suggest looking into it. Um, again, it's one of those areas where it's sometimes difficult to quantify what the value is. Like if I send you an email and you open it, I can tell that you've done that. Whereas if I send out a Facebook advertisement, I can't necessarily tell who has seen it. I could see numbers of who have seen it, but I can't actually see that you personally have seen it. And to me, that um, makes it a little less valuable. On the other hand, um, there are companies that are finding it valuable in terms of purchases. So 
you know, take a look into it. Um, again, this is an area that I know something about. So if you're interested in Facebook advertising, um, I'm happy to talk to you about that. So um, this is an example of within Constant Contact, you can do Facebook advertising, and this is what it looks like. Um, you have certain, uh, it's different from actually doing it through Facebook, but um, it takes some of the, uh, some of the challenges out. It also takes out some of the micro-targeting that you can do. But if you're interested and you have the budget for it, it's a pretty simple, straightforward way to go. Um, you pick a message, you define your audience, set your budget, and then there you have it. And I'll go back one just so you can see the to find the audience section. Um, but within uh, Facebook, the advertising capabilities are much, much more specific. I mean, you can advertise to people who, you know, have been to your website. You can advertise to people who are between the age of 20 and 21 who live in a particular zip code. I mean, it gets very, very specific. So this is one way to do it. Um, and Constant Contact, I think, is the only email marketing program that has a um, relationship with Facebook directly like this. So if you're interested in doing this type of advertising, um, it is possible and it's within your account and you can sleuth that or you, I'd be glad to show you how that works. Um, and there is sort of the end result once you've created the advertisement. Um, you can choose how many people you want to reach and what kind of budget you want to spend. And unfortunately, I think these are the only choices right now. That's the kind of numbers they're talking about. So um, yeah, just so you know that it is available and uh, it's very quick and you can spend hundred dollars quickly and get Facebook advertising going probably in under five minutes. And that is how your ad would look out on Facebook at the end of it. And you can also use it to promote your mailing list because here is um, an example of a newsletter that's going out. And once someone clicks on that link, the newsletter opens up in an archive version that also enables somebody to join your list. So here are the different um, social platforms with advertising options. They pretty much all do now. Um, I have personally done advertising on Facebook and on LinkedIn. Um, and I also am doing some on YouTube as well, but I can't speak for the others personally, but they are out there. So, you know, if you are somebody that's using Instagram 100% for your business, it would definitely make sense to look into doing advertising on Instagram. So growing your list, email plus social media equals more customer engagement. So I personally recommend using social media as much as possible for building your email list. I would have, I do have um, sign up links on all of my different social media sites so that people will come and join my list. It is the best way, um, I think, to market your work out there to the world is by using email marketing. And you can use social media to build your list. It helps to lead to new customers and more business referrals, which is also a great way to go. And so here's, you know, an example of inst on Instagram, somebody using um, a sign up link um, in their profile. And every one of your profiles should have a link like this um, and in any place that you can think of, really. We've got a lot of different um, possibilities. Here's one for uh, a Facebook sign up link. And you can also take this link right here and you can move it up higher in the list. And that's through, there's a section here called Manage Tabs. So I don't personally tend to get a lot of um, signups this way, but all you need is one or two and it's free um, if you've got email marketing going. And, you know, some pages are going to be more, um, uh, you know, have more luck with this than others. And if you highlight the fact that you're doing this, on your Facebook page, you know, pointing people to just stay on Facebook, but to sign up for your list here, you'll have more success with it. There's also a button now on Facebook that allows you to do the same thing. Now you might use that for something else, booking a session, you know, if you're a massage therapist or buy my book or whatever it is, but um, this is 
I think preferred. That's what I would have set up. In fact, that's what I do have set up. Um, so within a post, you can also have a sign up link um, for like this is an example of Pinterest. So um, just know how to get your sign up link. You might want to make a tinyurl.com version of your sign up link so that you can easily remember it and you can type it in at a moment's notice or post it on social media, however you want. So here's an example of um, you know, putting social media links on your email newsletter. And you want to also use your metrics within your email marketing to decide which social media um, platforms you want to promote. So you don't necessarily have to include every platform that you're on. If most people um, who are fans of yours are fans on Facebook, you might want to make this link down here um, just the Facebook link. And then also, if people do click on these various links, you can kind of keep track of, well, most people went to my Pinterest site. So therefore, you know, I'm going to start focusing more on Pinterest. And here you can see which URLs were clicked on most. And again, the, the highest number was with Pinterest. So that might mean that most of your people are going to Pinterest. Therefore, you know, it's a sign that uh, you might want to spend more time on Pinterest. Okay, I see we've got some more questions and I'm going to get to the questions at the end. So just hold on another minute or two and we will be there. So you can do this. This is, um, you know, this has been our agenda for the day. Picking a social media site, setting up your various networks, announcing your presence to people, creating content, possibly trying advertising, and then using all of the above to grow your email list. And rinse and repeat. <laughs> there you go. Um, so I believe all of us can do this. It's an ongoing um, strategy. Um, social media platforms will also change, which can be frustrating. But if you, you know, stay familiar with one or two of them, you can hopefully go along with the changes and um, you know, really use this to your advantage. And I can help you with this. Um, Don, as um, mentioned before, uh, he shared his sign-up link for his newsletter. Uh, he's a great person to work with as well. And so you don't have to go it alone. You can always reach out. That's a big part of what social media is about as well, is um, asking for help and you know asking for assistance or direction. Um, I have tons of people who I work with, you know, maybe even just once or twice a year where they just have a couple of questions and we work together for a half hour or an hour or we sit in a coffee shop and I show them a little bit of how uh, how things work. I've also got um, tutorial videos um, that are go more in depth on social media. If you go to albertideation.com um, forward slash videos, you can see those and I'll include all of that in a link back to you um, in a uh, email out to you in a little bit. But um, we are here to help and there's nothing wrong with getting help with this stuff. It's not, uh, it, it seems like it's really simple and straightforward, but a lot of it is um, simple and straightforward for me because I've been looking at it for years. Again, if you've been part of today's webinar, uh, you're welcome to take advantage of getting started with Constant Contact for $5 a month for three months. And um, you can use that link down below to sign up for that $5 promotion. That's the only way you can get it. And it's good until nine o'clock tonight. Uh, Pacific time. And now I will go ahead and take some questions. And uh, I want to thank you very much also for being here with me today and um, suffering through the initial uh, technical difficulties. I am really sorry about that. Um, but I will go ahead and take your, your questions. Thanks a lot for being